This lesson is on chemical abstracts. Chemical abstracts covers all of the world's research literature in chemistry and in related areas. It's produced by the American Chemical Society. This society, besides doing many reputable things, also is an outstanding publisher. Chemical abstracts exist now only as different online databases. It used to exist also in print. In fact, that's how it started out before databases came along. It started in 1907, and the final print edition was in 2009. Besides being in hard copy print, it also existed in microfilm or microfiche. These were not very sophisticated, they were just actual photocopies of the actual pages in the print. The print volumes took up a lot of space on the shelf, and these were a more compact way to have access to chemical abstracts. It also existed from 1977 to 2009 as a CD-ROM product. Very few people subscribe to it. You may never see it. All years going back to 1907, are online now. There are different versions of the online database, and this is what we will be looking at in the other slides. Just looking at what's in Chemical Abstracts, it's now a very big database. There are more than 50 million entries. They add about 1 million new articles every year. As I said before, it started in 1907, but in recent years, they started adding some selected material from the past, from before 1907. As far as primary sources, about two thirds of it are journal articles. They cover more than nine and a half thousand journals. About 20% of the coverage are patents, and you can see the other kinds of primary references that are also present. This does not at all mean that if you do a search, you will get 63% journal articles, 20% patents, and smaller numbers of those other kinds of documents. It depends on your actual subject field. In some research fields, everything that's done is just academic and it will be mostly in journal articles and maybe some conference proceedings. In some fields of chemistry where there is commercial application, in other words, where money can be made, you want to protect yourself with patents. We'll be talking more about patents later. I've done searches for people where all the important literature is only in patents. So the, these are just general averages and you can tell what proportions of articles you will get for your particular research topic. They also cover secondary and tertiary sources, which are everything else besides primary research literature. They cover review articles and books. A little bit more detail of what chemical abstracts includes and what they don't include. They cover all the research literature in chemistry but they don't include all books. The only books they mention are books that publishers send them. The other thing they do not include is the business side of chemistry. And we'll see how to deal with the business side of chemistry on the next slide. The main reason why chemical abstracts does not cover the business side of chemistry is because they have a separate publication called Chemical Industry Notes. CUNY does not subscribe to it. If you ever are interested in the business side of chemistry, note there are many subscription-based products that do cover the business side of chemistry. Baruch College, which is the business school within CUNY, has some of these products. So you can actually investigate them if you ever do need to do an in-depth searching on the business side of chemistry. You can also take a look at some of the free sources, which I've noted at the bottom of this slide. 
Now for a more in-depth look at the different versions of the Chemical Abstracts database. All of these versions have exactly the same amount of information. The way you access it is different. The first source is called STN or, or slight variation, STN on the web. STN stands for Scientific and Technical Network. They have many databases and Chemical Abstracts is one of them. The way you use it is that you pay for each use, you pay for each search. It's just like sitting in a taxi. You're sitting in a taxi, you pay for how long the taxi ride is, and you even pay if you're just sitting there doing nothing. You can expect to pay about $50 per search or even more than that. When we go into some examples of searching in chemical abstracts on STN, you will see exactly how much it costs. That's a little later in the course. They do give you a discount to academic subscribers. If you subscribe to SciFinder, you get a discount when searching STN. And we'll see several times where you do want to search STN where SciFinder is not enough. There's also a version called STN Easy, which you will not see in this course. It's a simplified version for very casual, incomplete searching. And incomplete is the key word here. If searching was very easy, we would not need a course like this. So I'm not going to mention anything more about STN Easy. It's something you should never use. Now looking at SciFinder. This is based on a subscription. CUNY subscribes to it. You can do as much searching as you want. It's a web-based version of Chemical Abstract. It's just like using a web resource. But as I note here, it is not for all searches. It looks fairly easy to use, but it has its limitations. And we're going to look at some of those limitations later in the course when I compare STN with SciFinder. There's a new version of SciFinder called SciFinder N, which describes some of these limitations, but we don't have access to it. We have access to SciFinder, not SciFinder N. And when you finish here at CUNY, if you do have access to SciFinder, you don't know which version you may have access to. That's why it's good to know SciFinder, the conventional SciFinder, where I have to point out the limitations that it has. As far as how much a subscription to SciFinder costs, Chemical Abstracts used to publish this information. They no longer publicly post this because contracts are negotiated individually. They say they are, are equitable among institutions, but every institution negotiates their own price. The cost depends on how many users there are in an organization, the kind of organization, whether it's industrial or academic, the kind of work that's being done, and also the history, how much the organization has used SciFinder or STN in the past. This is old information from several years ago. It's the last time when Chemical Abstracts actually told people how much it cost. Then about 10 years ago, it cost about $40,000 a year. Another 20,000 to include structure searching, which we'll see is very important. For master's degree colleges, which doesn't apply to us because we grant PhDs, the cost was much less. In industry, you can expect to spend over $100,000 every year for access to SciFinder, which is why a lot of companies cannot afford this, and they choose to, choose to search STN, where you pay for each search. That's why we'll be learning both ways of searching in this course. Because again, when you finish here at CUNY, you don't know what kind of organization you will go into and whether or not they can afford SciFinder. This useful chart which used to be on the Chemical Abstracts website is not there now. I don't know why they took it down. 
but it describes the different databases which are included in SciFinder. We will be spending a lot of time looking at most of these, especially the CAS registry file and the CA plus file. The CAS react file, which covers organic reactions in detail, we will also be looking at. We will not be looking at the ChemList file that covers just regulatory information, which really isn't important for this course. The ChemCats file is very useful. When you want to order chemicals, you can see which companies have them. Chemical Industry Notes is listed here, but it is not part of SciFinder. The last one on this list, the Marcouche Marpat, is a very specific advanced database in patents, and we will not be covering it in this course. These descriptions are continued on the next slide where you can get more detail about each one of these databases. Again, this is just a continuation of the previous slide, again mentioning that every one of these databases in SciFinder except the chemical industry notes. For many years, Chemical Abstracts had a competitor. This competitor was Chemische Zentralblatt. It was an index published entirely in German. It was difficult to use for two reasons. The first is that if you didn't know German, it was very hard to use. The second is that the chemistry organization was not standardized. We're going to see in chemical abstracts, they have a very standardized way of describing substances and subjects. Once you find the right way to name a subject or a substance, you know how to get everything on that subject or substance. Chemische Zentralblatt did not have such detailed organization. It has been translated into English and it has been incorporated into SciFinder. Takes away all the disadvantages of the German language. We do not subscribe to it. At this point, CUNY cannot afford it. It would be nice to have access to ChemZent and have it included seamlessly in SciFinder because it covers chemistry that may not be included in chemical abstracts. It makes SciFinder more complete, but again, we don't have it. At the top of the screen is what an entry in the original printed Chemische Zentralblatt looked like. In the bottom screen is what it looks like in SciFinder. It looks like anything else in SciFinder. It's all in English and much easier to access. 